Hey everyone, my name is Jeff, and I'm an occupational therapist who practices in the United States. I work in the hospital with patients such as those who have had a stroke. And today I'm going to go over how to open up your hand after a stroke. So no matter how long it's been, even like you just had a stroke a couple months ago, maybe it's been many, many years. So what happens after a stroke is you may have a really tight hand and the medical term for this is spasticity. And that's basically an increased kind of muscle tension tightness that causes your hand, your arm, sometimes you notice even your legs to kind of tighten and stiffen up and it just doesn't really loosen up its grip. Today, I'm going to show you how to open up the hand. But before I get right into that, I want to go over some quick kind of general tips to help you out to get the most out of this demonstration as you kind of go through this with me. Just like how many other things may have triggers such as pain, which may have triggers, spasticity itself may actually have some triggers. So examples of that could be like cold, stress, even position. So you may have noticed even in your own personal experience, maybe you've moved from point A to point B, like from a bed to a chair or something, and you have noticed like an increase in spasticity in your hand, your arm, or even somewhere in the rest of your body. Sometimes people who may even have just sneezed and like go achoo and then their arm kind of like tightens up. Sometimes it could be just a certain position. For example, some studies even show that a position like laying down, which is thought to be like a really good position of comfort, is a culprit or cause or a trigger of spasticity compared to things like sitting down. So if you're laying down, I encourage you to try and sit up even in bed before you do this exercise. If you're sitting in a chair like me, then that's great. Ideally, you have like a hard, firm surface to work with in front of you, like a table, a bedside tray. If you're sitting in a chair, even something like an armrest will do because it's basically what you want is something that's firm that can act as like a strong brace for you to help you to support your hand after you basically open up. Basically, what it's going to want to do is close right back up and it's you're not going to get like completely opened up and it's not going to stay there typically when you start doing this exercise, especially if you're really, really tight and you've just opened up your hand. So after you guys have gotten up or positioned yourself into the ideal position to do this exercise, the next thing is to try and control your stress and not stress out. So a really bad time to do this is like if you're really stressed out or you're just not really feeling in the top of your game. So maybe you've just taken a shower and you've warmed up your muscles or you've had a nice meal and you're ready to go, that's probably a better time to do something like this as opposed to like you having to go pee. Like if you have to go to, go to the bathroom right now or you are having an excruciating pain or you just had an argument with a family member, probably not good times to try and open up your hand. Not that it, you can't do it, you just won't have the most success. So just like with everything else in life, timing is key, right? Another helpful thing is to try and relax and not rush this. So yeah, you can definitely force something open, but you won't get the most success out of it because if you're not relaxed, then you're not going to be able to, you know, get the most out of it. Yeah, it's kind of intuitive and kind of common sense, but it is worth mentioning. And another thing is I will be kind of just breathing really slow and deep, and that helps to manage a lot of things like stress and reduce anxiety. If you guys have done yoga in the past or even just exercised, and just really worked on your breathing as you exercise, you know, the many benefits of like just slow, deep breathing. So there isn't really one wrong way to breathe except like hyperventilating. So also a lot of times people tend to hold their breath. So don't hold your breath as you do these exercises. So today I'm going to pretend that as you can probably see my left arm is the one that's kind of tight and closed up. And you'll hear a lot of things from different therapists on the internet whether you should start working from like your shoulder going downwards towards your hand or the other way around. Should you start with your hand and then open it up first and then work on any other things? Personally, I don't think there's any wrong answer. Historically, some of the like theorists believe that recovery in your journey for recovery happens from your body and then going outwards towards your fingertips. But that has since been shown to not be the case. It's kind of an outdated theory. What's really the key is just doing things that you're really motivated by. And if you work with your hands, as most humans do, then there's really nothing really wrong with that. We use our hands for a lot of skills, right? Working with tools, playing instruments, using a keyboard, working with our smartphone, writing, shaking someone's hand, cooking, like so many things, right? 
which is why you probably want to open up your hand and regain function and get the most out of your rehabilitation, no matter where you are at in your journey. So I highly encourage you guys all to follow along and to really just take your time and be patient with yourself because I myself personally, you know, I don't have a arm that is like locked up from a stroke. I'm going to try and pretend, but you guys may be even more tight than me, or you may even do it faster than me. So I'll try to go find the middle ground and let you guys follow along, but feel free to kind of pause or rewind and just follow along as you see fit based on where you're at. And so I'm going to focus on working on the thumb. The reason being, well, it's probably the most abnormal looking, right? It's kind of stuck inside. And us as humans, what makes us kind of set us apart is the use of our opposing thumbs for things like um, using tools and things compared to other animals. So the thumb is a very important part of that. And also because getting the thumb out of the way allows us to open up our fingers. What I'm going to do is basically do something called facilitation. And this is just a really fancy word for like waking up our muscles. So yeah, we can try and force our fingers open, but it helps to kind of wake up our muscles using some of these techniques. And if you're an occupational therapist following what I'm using is basically called the rude techniques. And there are three common ways that I like to facilitate a muscle to help it open up. One is to add, apply deep pressure and to squeeze on it. So if you notice in your thumb at the base of it, you kind of have like a squishy part here called the thenar eminence. And if you were to squish on it, it kind of helps relax it. And I'm just going to back up a little bit and just demonstrate why this kind of works. If you notice like when you like flex your muscle, like your bicep, it kind of bulges, right? But if I were to squeeze it and squish it, it kind of flattens it out. And that kind of helps me open up my hand because when I, my arm is not flexed and I'm not showing my guns, it's kind of flabby and squishy, right? So it's the same as if I were to fully depress and like apply deep pressure to this bicep muscle here. In contrast, when it, with it fully kind of like doing its job and like me flexing my elbow here, it's really squishy and bulgy. And it's the opposite of what happens when you don't squish it. So by squishing it, it kind of helps to relax it and open it up. So I'm going to apply the same kind of concept here to my thumb. Another thing you can do is called fast brushing. And when you do fast brushing, it helps to facilitate and wake up a muscle. So if I wanted to make myself to bend my arm and like flex it even more, I would basically fast brush it several times like this, all basically over the muscle right here. Another thing you can do is tapping on it. So you see my muscles here, right? So I would tap on it to wake it up and make it even stronger and facilitate its uh, basically what we call flexion of the muscle. Now, this of course may or may not work for everybody. Everybody's different. Everybody's stroke is different, including like the areas of the brain that were affected in the infarct of your stroke. So a funny thing about our brains is like we are uniquely wired, like no two brains are wired exactly the same. So facilitation techniques may or may not work with you. And what's really interesting, you may even notice the opposite effect. You may notice like your arm like get weaker or vice versa. So I highly encourage you all to kind of experiment and see what happens when you try these techniques. And if they don't work for you, then try doing it on the opposite side. So basically the concept being with facilitation is I have muscle here for biceps, right? And that helps me to bring my arm up and to extend my arm. If you guys work out, you'll notice you, I would be using my tricep, right? So I can work on either side of my arm. And in general, just the general concept is the inside of my arm here is what will bring my hand in. And then the outside of my arm, like the backside of my arm here, is what will help me bring my arm outward. So if I were to facilitate, like, for example, my bicep, that will help me bring my arm up and inward. And if I were to facilitate my tricep, that will kind of extend it and make it strain out and go outward away from my body. So what I want to do to facilitate is to work on basically outside of the body and my arm. So if I wanted to straighten out my arm, like if I wanted to straighten out my elbow, for example, I'd work on my tricep here and I either fast brush it. Doesn't matter how many times, just a whole bunch of times, like 15 is good. Or I can tap on it. So same concept applies here. I've shown you to squeeze, deep pressure, or I can fast brush. Now I don't want to fast brush on the inside because that's kind of make my, my, 
my kind of like this pattern here, this arm pattern even stronger. So I want to do the outside. Now to do my hand open up, I would basically, I showed the outside is what facilitates opening it up. So I kind of want to tap here and brush on the backside of my arm. Now, if you guys are locked up and really, really tight, you'll probably start with something like this, right? So I'm going to fast brush on the outside here all along. And it kind of feels good for me. It kind of helps me. Another great thing, even if it doesn't really do anything else to help you out for facilitation, a lot of times with stroke, you may experience numbness, right? So this is a great way to kind of work on your sensation and your feeling getting that back from your numbness. So I think it kind of is beneficial and kills two birds with one stone. Basically, it helps to facilitate what you want to do, like opening your hand and your arm up. And two, also helps you regain your sensation from numbness. So after I've warmed that up, I can tap on it too. Tap all along the outside. And the muscles that wake up the hand and help work on it to open up kind of work all the way down here on the outside and the back side of it. So now that we've warmed it up, so to speak, let's take some deep breaths. And what I'm going to do is try and squish on the squishy part of my the base of my thumb between my wrist and the bone at the base of my thumb, there's a squishy part here. And work on opening that up. And what I can do, I mean, there's no real wrong way to do this. Basically, you wanna just grab on your finger and open it up, right? Your thumb here. And you'll notice, an interesting thing is if you, you probably noticed this before, if you were to get it up and open and you were to let go, it kind of bounces back and rebounds in. And that's definitely okay. The longer you stretch this out, the easier it will be. Another thing you don't want to do is hyperextend your joints. So basically don't open it up more than you think you normally, the how far it can go before your injury. So one more time, just going to grab, squish it and kind of what you can do is you can start from the wrist and squish on your DNR eminence. And kind of go towards your thumb and then slide upward towards it until you grab it with your other fingers here and kind of open it up open it up and take your time definitely don't rush this and remember to deep breathe and your thumb Depending on your situation, it may start from here. It may even be like on the side of out your fingers. No matter where it is, the end kind of position you want to end up is like with a thumbs up position like this. And that allows your thumb to get out of the way so that you can work on your fingers next. So from here, you kind of want to change the position of your hand. And what I found beneficial personally is to kind of Grab, basically stick your the uh, thumb into the bottom of your hand like this. So you want to hold your hand, your squeeze your thumb kind of upside down. Not like this, like you're not doing on top of your thumb, but you're going to flip it. So you're going to go like this. Now I have my hand outward. You probably may be starting like this. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to have my hand out on the table so it's easier to see on camera. And... So once you get your thumb up and outward and opened up like so, flip it and grab it upside down. Reason being, because you want to use the long part of your index finger to open up your hand like so. And you can even use the rest of your fingers, like your middle, ring, and pinky to kind of open up. You see how they each can help push and open up the rest of your, your hand using each finger to finger. So basically it looks like this. This hand goes and opens up the fingers while the rest of these can also help and push too. Try and maximize your, your hand surface area to do something for opening up your, the rest of your fingers. And this part will take 
probably a little bit longer because it makes sense, right? We have more fingers here. One, two, three, four, as opposed to your thumb. And if you're having a really, really tough time, try and breathe. Maybe you get a drink of water. You can do the fast brushing technique. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Tap. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm counting in seconds, not the many times, amount of times that I'm tapping. And then try it again. So if your thumb closed up, that's definitely okay. You can give it a deep squish on your dinar. Open it up again. Okay, and then from here, grab it upside down position and try and work it open. And one tip is to try and just open up from the tips of your fingers and not making as much contact with your palm of your hand because that may facilitate it closing back up. Remember how we want the outside to be touched more than the inside? The more we touch the inside, the more it'll close. So of course you got to kind of grab the fingers, but try and do it without making too much contact. So you can hold on to the thumb kind of for support and then use the your index finger and the rest of your fingers, like your ring and your pinky to open it up. But you don't want to do it like this, where you're making contact with the palm of your hand. But everyone's different. So at this point is when I'm going to use my environment to my advantage. And that's basically using a hard, firm surface. Something like a table would be great, a bedside tray, or even like a book, like placed on top of your lap. If you're in bed, something firm, because it can help. Basically, you want to do this position where have you ever played that game? I never did, but you've seen it on TV and movies where they kind of put the knife in between the fingers, right? You're kind of mimicking that kind of end position. So what you're going to do is once you open up your thumb and you open up your fingers, you're going to place your hand onto this surface. And you'll notice it may want to curl up and lock back up and close back up. So start with your your thumb again, open it up. You can now basically have a really good, nice location to area to brush on it and wake it up. Go back and forth, tap. And put into position. So if it starts, if you're starting out like this, for example, Can open it up and basically for the thumb one easy way to move it is from the base of the thumb like so you could pull on the fingertip as well i personally think it's easier to start from the thumb here base of the thumb as opposed to the thumb tip So then from here, then you can work your way out to the thumb tip. One great thing about using a table is you can kind of use a pulling technique to open your hand up. So what you would do is you can kind of, this is a good exercise for your balance too, is to bring your, your torso forward, your trunk, and then bring your elbow forward and slide it forward on the table. And that'll make it close it up a little bit, but that's okay. And then simultaneously pull your hand back and try to open it up your fingers i'm pulling so hard that my table is starting to slide but yeah if you have surfaces like a book or something you might have to kind of brace that surface so it doesn't slide with you so from here try and get it as straight as you can to this position right you can also Work on each finger. So I'll start with the pinky. Working my way up to my middle.
my ring. And my pinky. By the way, if you have a chance to cut your nails, that's definitely a good thing because some of you may notice it kind of digs into the meat of your hands, of your palm. So cutting your nails definitely helps make it a lot easier and more painless of an activity. And then from here, once you get it to basically fairly straight, you can push down on it with your other hand and put some actual weight on it. And a good thing to do is actually to kind of like if you're doing a push up, put some weight over it using your other hand and leaning into it with your body. and not making contact with the surface and seeing what your hand does. And try to experiment with slow breathing and see if that helps. Brushing, see if that helps. Tapping, seeing that helps. Or even like applying some deep pressure, seeing if that helps. Sometimes some funny things you'll notice, well, even the smallest of things will trigger your spasticity and make it lock up more. Some even something as simple as like yawning. Oh, maybe even being more awake or maybe ever, if you're too tired, maybe you had too much caffeine, too much like food, everyone's different and their brain is wired differently. So try and notice what you did leading up to the activity, what kind of things you ate, what kind of things you drank and seeing and kind of logging and keeping a journal for yourself and seeing what really works. And one thing I highly encourage you all to do, we all have smartphones these days, right? Record yourself doing this exercise, like set it up like on the side here, like you're just recording your hand and maybe like every time you do a session, record yourself and you can compare yourself to see your progress that you make, because it's hard to remember how you do, especially after stroke, your memory may not be as good. And this will help not only cheer you up, but show your family, your providers, your therapists, the progress that you're making. So hope this helps. Thanks for watching.